Southern Lighters is a term we coined to reflect origin of place and to identify our role as self-proclaimed goodwill ambassadors using a bicycle to understand and communicate with the world we live in. As African American men from the South, we chose a bicycle as our vehicle as it would not isolate us from the people or the environment. Through it, we found adventure and a spirit that dwells in all humanity. Bicycling's popularity was at its height in the United States during the 1990s. This video shows what two African American men were doing on bicycles at that time. We hope our experience will encourage others to come forward with the bicycle stories locally and nationally. Through narration and photographs, we hope the audience will learn a little more about time and a place regarding a people and its cultural celebration. We're looking back and going forward. The preparation of our bicycle tours is based on the development of a proposal that we put together that contains our resumes, information about who we are, what we do, and how we do it. And at the time of the construction of this proposal, both Jesse and I were educators in the San Francisco Bay Area. We selected each country for our trips through a random process of throwing a dart at a world map on the wall and then forming consensus on the place to be visited. Once a place is selected, our research begins and it includes information on the area's history, people, culture, religion, challenges, and opportunities. The proposal includes the purpose of our visit, our needs, proposed activities, intent to share our lived and learned experiences, and finally, our cycling program. The goals of all our trips were one, to enhance international, cultural, and educational understanding through networking. Two, in this case, it was to facilitate dialogue between Brazil and the African American community related to education, art, travel, and economics. Three, to facilitate exchange of travel and information in areas of education and culture. To broaden our understanding of the educational and cultural systems in various Brazilian states. And five, to promote economic awareness among the citizens of Brazil and the African American community. As was the case with Brazil, we forwarded a formal proposal including our resumes and experiences in cycling. We had challenges naturally surrounding our trip to Brazil, among which was clothing, being taken seriously, and financing. In the end, we overcame these challenges by self-financing the trip. Thus, the Brazilian Cycle Tour of 1993 became a reality. We arrived in Salvador Bahia on January 19, 1993. Our arrival was quite distinct. As we were arriving, we were followed by the secret police in the person of Tony Perez. Later, after becoming acquainted with Tony and his wife, the doors to Salvador Bahia opened widely, and our mission to share and act as goodwill ambassadors was officially launched. The Brazilian government accepted our proposal at the time when Convo was taking place. However, they did not honor our request for assistance in navigating, so we were left to navigate the area ourselves, and that was a glorious opportunity for the Southern Riders to practice the whole notion of being goodwill ambassadors on a bicycle. And as you recall, our cycling tour was originally planned around visiting several cities covering such places as Salvador, African soul of Brazil, Cochuria, better known as the jewel of Reconcavo, Itaparica, known as the largest island in Bahia de Todos de Santos, Camacari, local town on the Atlantic that was once in the rainforest, Candias, 
a small beach town in Brazil, and Praia de Forte, a fishing village with fine beaches and castles. As fate would have it, <laughs> we ended up cycling throughout Salvador Bahia, considered the African soul of Brazil. Salvador was the first colonial capital of Brazil and is now the capital of the northeastern Brazilian state of Bahia. It is known for its colonial architecture. Salvador is also Brazil's capital of happiness because of its easygoing population, popular outdoor parties, and its street carnival. Salvador is the center of Afro-Brazilian culture. In 1993, the population was 62.83% brown, known as multiracial people, and 16% were black. As the chief locus of the early Brazilian slave trade, Bahia is believed to possess the most distinct African imprint in terms of culture and custom in Brazil. The ancestral population, according to the DNA of Bahia, is 49% African. The population is directly descendant from African slaves who were Yoruba, Nigerian, Ghanaians, Togolese, and Beninians. As we rode around on our bicycles throughout those eight days, we tasted the local foods, drowned in the local drinks, <laughs> and became one with Bahia. Our friendships grew and expanded in ways that made us feel connected, appreciated, and wanted in the community. Mm -hmm. Indeed, Baez's reputation as a place of friendliness, excellent cuisine, and easygoing lifestyle is all true. Vem comigo, vem cantar. A festa do folclore já vai começar. Na cidade baixa pega a estação. Entre no trem, o futuro vem. O passado vai, o passado vem, o futuro vai. Estrelas vão brilhar, todas as estrelas vão brilhar. O céu a lua vem só pra espiar. O céu a lua vem só pra espiar. Vai passar o Jaraguá, os congos, os portões e os cambindas vão brilhar. Vão brilhar. It is said that Brazil comes alive during carnival time, and more importantly, it's believed that Salvador Bahia represents the soul of carnival. And by all standards, we would concur as it is a time for mask and illusion, and also a time when desires are expressed openly, decked out in costumes and penciled for a moment on lips and eyes. Carnival was originally a Catholic festival lasting for three to five days just prior for 40 days of Lent, which precedes Easter. One of the most distinctive things about Carnival, as we discovered, were the blowcoats. The world famous Carnival celebration is centered around a huge parade down the main street of Salvador and everyone participates. The trio electricals are arguably the most important elements of this whole experience. Trio electricals are slow moving trucks with giant speakers and with singers and bands performing on top of the trucks. Blocos are the groups that follow each trio electrico. At the perimeter of the blocos are men holding hands and working as a human barrier 
to protect the people walking inside the bloco. People pay for that experience of following the trio electrical by purchasing a special shirt. As you will note, people in colorful costumes, painted faces, and outstanding masks crowd the streets. Sensuous movements, expressive behavior, and a love of life characterize communal joy in a celebration of humanity. During Carnival, we visited Itaparica, the largest island in the Bay of All Saints. Itaparica. And there, the celebration of Carnival continues, with figures moving in and out of the community. Some would consider them devil figures, stirring mischief throughout the community. One important connection we made during our stay was an accidental meeting with Yara Maria Correa de Oliveira in the Pelarino. She was the first African Brazilian artist of renowned statue. She invited us to her home for dinner and to meet her husband and her children. It was there, it was really there, that we saw the unfolding of life through the eyes of a Brazilian artist. Here she put, she captured the soul of Brazil through expressive art. And as she would say, this is Brazil, my Brazil, my Bahia. We learned a great deal about the educational system and its discriminatory practices that excluded blacks from achieving higher levels of education. We learned about the displacement of thousands of blacks for the development of the Pelarino. And we also discovered that discrimination in Brazil, unfortunately even today, is alive and well based on color and status. Our original proposal to act as U.S. Goodwill Ambassador had its crowning moment through an invitation to appear on Bahia's local radio and television stations. We talked about our life as African Americans in America, the life of Bahians in Brazil, and the purpose of our visit. Apparently we were effective, Jesse, because everywhere we went thereafter, <clears throat> we were recognized as the black Americans who had appeared on television and were visiting Bahia on a bicycle. Looking back at our goals of 1993 and reflecting on our experience in Brazil, we conclude that we were early to see the value of cycling as a method for traveling to other lands, learning more about people, culture, religion, and the celebration of our humanity. Brazil was indeed an exciting, mesmerizing, learned experience that will never be forgotten. For certain, Jesse and I will continue as Southern Riders, as goodwill ambassadors in an effort to share, to know, to learn, 
to understand and to become one with others on this great planet. A hope and dream that we aspire to, it is one that does not see color, does not see race, does not see status and caste, but only humanity. Join us next time as we cycle the globe as Southern Riders, unofficial goodwill ambassadors on a bicycle.